Hi guys, my tractor is a 1997 TAF 35DI. I blew the clutch out while brush hogging one day and lost all the hydraulics. So it was off to the owner's manual. Okay, we need to check that and then we'll take check the fitment. I've installed a lot of clutches in my day, but never a dual clutch. This clutch comes shipped with a locking bolt. Make sure that you do not take this bolt out until the pressure plate is bolted to the flywheel. If you do this too early, it can cause the pressure plate to release, and then you'll have to press it back into place. Okay, so we got that one snug. So we got a 23, 24, and 25. That is 69 plus uh, 69, be 89, be 82. That's a little bit too wide, so we need to tighten that up a little bit. We're going to move it down to 0.082. I didn't have the exact feeler gauge, so I had to stack up a couple feeler gauges together to get the correct measurement. Basically what I'm doing right here is I'm setting the gap for the inside clutch plate. That's what operates the hydraulics. This tractor only had 275 hours on it. The clutch actually wasn't worn out. By not using a sacrificial clutch on the brush hog, it sheared off all the rivets on the hydraulic clutch plate. Gonna need two wrenches for this. Okay, so we set that at 0 0.082. Little too tight.
rather than turning the engine, I just maneuvered around the pressure plate and set these adjustments. I didn't want to take a chance of accidentally starting the tractor by turning the crank over. I know sometimes with diesels you can actually start them just by turning the crank. realize I'm not the best cameraman but this is one of my earlier videos I've produced. Since I couldn't hardly find any information on this type of clutch assembly I decided it'd be the best time to produce a video showing everyone my mistakes when I did a clutch like this. This is also the first time I've done a voiceover on a video. I hope it's okay. I've also got a replacement of the injector pump video that YouTube muted because I had a radio playing in the background. I'll get that voiceover done and get it produced. As you can see, getting these set exactly right isn't the easiest thing to do. I would have included the installation of the clutch plates and the pressure plate onto the flywheel, but I lost a hard drive, so I lost a bunch of video. I don't have a cameraman to zoom in on this, but this is actually a bolt with a locking nut on it that I'm adjusting. If this clutch and pressure plate assembly looks pretty large, it is, and it's daggum heavy. One reason this has taken me so long, I want to make sure these adjustments are done exactly right because if they're not, the whole tractor has to be split apart to adjust these. From what I've learned about this tractor, it's similar to a Massey Ferguson 231 except this one being metric. A little too tight.
Okay. Okay, that one is all sent. 0.082. And we're gonna check it everything one more time for tightness. Be careful not to over tighten. I'm sure these bolts will snap off. They don't appear to be hardened. Okay, it's tight. Okay, we need to check that and then we'll take check the fitment. It also supposed to require a special tool which I don't have. So I used the straightest thing I had was a brand new long snap-on screwdriver. How do we measure that? That's not flat enough. It's five and an eighth. It looks like that needs to go in just to RCH. Five and nine sixteenths. Five and nine sixteenths.
five and nine sixteenths. Put a little grease on the carrier itself. Okay, there's one spring on. Ugh. These hoses uh, pulling up. Needle nose works great for that. So the springs are on the carrier bearing now, or throwout bearing. 